Well, here it is Saturday night, and I'm sitting down and relaxing. I've had my dinner, and I got my shopping done before that. I went to the liquor store, and I was planning to get one Highland single malt and two blends. But I saw another malt that's hard enough to find, and it was right there on the shelf in front of me, so I couldn't resist. And so I ended up bringing home two malts and two blends. And uh, one of those blends was a blend I had before, which is the uh, Compass Box Great King Street Artist Blend. I guess that was about $65 plus tax. And I got this other blend too. I haven't had one of these in a while. This is the, uh, it's a famous grouse, but it's also famous grouse smoky black. Now what does that mean? An expertly crafted blend of rare peated glentorit and the famous grouse for a smooth, rich and slightly smoky whiskey. Okay, I've never had a Glen Turret and I haven't had a grouse in several years. I don't remember the last time. I think I had a bottle of grouse maybe sometime in the early 2000s. And here it says on the back, we bring together the finest ingredients, skilled craftsmanship and a tenacious obsession with quality to make our famous blends. The Famous Grouse Smoky Black Blends, more peated malt whiskies, including a rare version of Glen Turret, with the exceptional grain whiskies to produce a richer, lightly smoky, smooth flavor. Explore a smokier side to our famous whiskey. Please drink responsibly. 40% alcohol by volume and 750 mils. And I can't see a damn thing with these except to read the fine print that's on the model. I don't know why they make the print so small. You have to be a little child to be able to make out the letters. Well, it's got a metal twist cap and it comes off very easily. It is not child proof by any means. And this was, I don't know, $28 plus tax. Not bad. Or was it 32 Somewhere in that vicinity. It was not expensive. Uh, yep, yeah. the color suggests that it's grouse usually has some quite a bit of sherry in it. So that could be from the sherry. But it's got smoke too, it says. So it might be a little like smokehead. It might be a much weaker, well, it's not going to be like a Lafroy triple wood, but it's going to be. It's going to be, well, we'll see. Okay, we got a clean glass this time because the dirty one was looking really, really gnarly. Oh, yeah. I'm smelling a bit of the pizza I just ate, so maybe I should cleanse my palate just a little bit. That's where you get the bacon notes from your whiskey after eating pizza with bacon on it. Now I'm getting oh. You know, maybe the bacon that I'm smelling is coming from this. Because I smell something smoky. I don't smell anything. It doesn't smell sweet. It smells more dry. Dry and lightly smoky. Can I make out any fruits? 
Yeah. I'm getting plums. Plums, cherries, maybe, that kind of thing. And a little bit of smoke. Maybe, well, it's 40% alcohol by volume, so I don't really want to put any water in it. I'm usually good until about 50%. Then after 50%, okay, a bit of water is good. Hmm. Yeah, cherries, plums. Getting some caramel notes. And maybe some grain notes as well. Sweetness of the corn. Yeah, let's taste it. Mm. Mm. It's got a viscous, oily mouthfeel which I don't usually expect from a blended whiskey at 40% alcohol by volume. I'm getting some sherry, dry sherry. I'm getting also some cherries and yeah, I'm tasting plums as well. Maybe a bit of raspberry in there. Hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. Dark fruits and berries. Raspberry, cherry, plum. I'm liking it. There's no citrus or apple. It's more the dark fruits like you'd get from a sherry cask. I'm not getting grapes too much. It's quite well balanced. And that, that smoke that slightly smoky addition to it is very nice. For an inexpensive blend, this is nice. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting into this. The word rich comes to mind. It's rich, it's thick, oily, viscous. Mm. Not extremely peaty, but that's okay. It's light peat. And is it ever well smooth? It just goes it goes down. This is this is dangerously easy drinking, even though it has a rich flavor. It's delicious. It is really good. I'm surprised this is a lot better than I thought it would be. I have found a little gem. Hopefully I'll be able to find it again because apparently it's kind of rare. Glen Turret. I've never seen Glen Turret on the shelf, although I've heard of it and I've seen Ralphie do some reviews. And yeah, I guess the malt content is higher than, than for a regular famous grouse. You know, coming back to the nose, There's a bit of a, a yeasty, a bit of a yeasty uh, note to it. I'm smelling, yeah, yeast and dark fruits, plums. And you know, there is a hint of bacon in there. 
there's a hint of, of, of meat. Now, I don't know if that's coming from the peat smoke or what, but this is beautifully blended, nicely balanced, not too strong. It's only 40% alcohol by volume, but dangerous because you could drink this fast. Oh, oh, that is, that is lovely. Mm. And I'm not usually that big a fan of sherry, but when sherry's done right, oh, fabulous stuff. Yeah. Yeah, oh, very much slancha. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I'm going to enjoy the rest of this immensely. Food quick. <laughs> Food quick. Food quick. Food quick. Food quick. Food quick. <laughs> <laughs>